Hi everyone, my name is Paige. I am currently a dietetic intern with Wellness Workdays. I'm completing my clinical rotation at Worcester Community Hospital. Last week at the hospital, uh, Wendy from Abbott Nutrition down in Columbus came and paid us a visit. We went over some pre and post-op nutrition and then at the end we talked about tube feeding and the way that she explained everything was just uh, so helpful and simplified that I figured I would make a video uh, reiterating what she said to go over the basics of tube feeding placement. Uh, to start, an NG tube stands for nasogastric tube and this is a tube that goes through your nose, down your throat, and ends in your stomach. Um, you know, the purpose is if you can't chew and swallow very well, feeding is just right into your stomach. But you can imagine that that's not very popular because no one really wants a tube down their throat, through, your, through their nose, all the time. So NG tube. The next tube is a PEG tube. Um, all G tubes start as a PEG because PEG stands for percutaneous endoscopic gastrostomy tube. And this is referring to how the PEG tube is placed. So what happens is a scope is put down, down the throat through the esophagus and into the stomach, looks around. A light then is, sh um, they shine a light to the outside of the stomach and from there they'll, they'll use the light as a guide and they'll make a little incision through the abdominal wall into the stomach. From there, the PEG tube is not placed then from the, inside, from the outside inside. It is actually still fed through that same tube where the scope is and then it, it's actually then pulled out that way. So it's not this long. This tube is uh, like an IV tube. It's not a tube feeding tube. It's a little bit wider. Um, but there is a bumper at the end of a peg tube. It'll be about half the size of this. This is just an example. That bumper holds the tube in place. So you can imagine the, the stomach wall and that bumper there and the tube coming out. So that's a peg tube. Um, a lot of people get peg and G tube confused. Uh, a G tube just is a gastrostomy tube. Um, people can keep peg tubes or they can be changed to G tubes. Um, the idea is that a PEG tube stays in as for at least as long as it takes for that stoma to heal. So essentially, there is gonna always then be that stoma through the stomach, through the abdominal wall, to the outside of your body. Once that's healed, you can put a G tube in. Because it's healed, the, the PEG tube is actually pulled out, the bumper folds in on itself, and it's pulled out this way. A G tube is then placed then through the outside to the inside. So they feed it in and then there's actually uh, a valve where you would uh, pump air and a little balloon on the end inflates and replaces that bumper and holds, holds the G-tube in place. Um, so a PEG tube again and a G-tube, they're essentially the same thing. Uh, a G-tube though uh, is, is what was placed second. You never start with a G-tube. It's usually shorter, uh, can be lower profile but you never start with the G-tube, it's always a PEG tube because that refers to how it's placed. Once the G-tube is in there, it can be in there forever. Um, the balloon, again, keeps it in place. Um, if it's a hospital stay or home, uh, the nurse or yourself would have to check, make sure that balloon's inflated uh, to stay in, in place and all of that. Again, G-tubes are usually shorter, lower profile. They do make, I think, a name brand as Mickey, but it's a low profile G-tube. It's probably only about half a foot long, um, so it's, it's very low profile, especially if it's gonna be a long-term feeding. It's just uh, not as obvious and um, daunting. So, G-tube, gastrostomy tube. Uh, lastly, uh, a J-tube refers to a, a jejunostomy tube. So your small intestine has three parts, the duodenum, the jejunum, and the ileum. Uh, jejunum, a J-tube, is just means that the tube is being fed into, uh, it ends in the jejunum, which bypasses the stomach and the first part of the small intestine in case uh, a patient or someone does not have a fully functioning stomach and cannot handle that digestion, you can feed right into part of the small intestine. So what's interesting about a J-tube is that when, you, especially in a hospital setting, when you go and visit a patient, it looks like they have a PEG or, or a G-tube because the incision is through their stomach. Um, J-tubes are much skinnier, much more narrow than G-tubes and are actually fed through the G-tube past the stomach, past the duodenum, into the jejunum. 
So a, a patient may look like they have a G-tube, but really it's a J-tube, and you know that from looking in their chart. Uh, you know, it's obviously um, noted where, where their tube fees it is ending. So as clinicians, it's important to not be confused. You know, it looks like it's, it's feeding into the stomach. It doesn't necessarily, just because that's what it looks like on the outside, doesn't mean that the end of that tube is ending in the stomach. It could end in the jejunum. And what was interesting is she showed us how skinny a, a J J tube will be and can be fed through a thicker tube coming out of the um, stomach. So I hope that was helpful. It was really helpful for me when they broke it down. If you have any questions, let me know.